Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. I hope you have enjoyed our spring football coverage right here on our YouTube channel. And of course, all the coverage back at BamaInsider.com. Today, I'm talking about Alabama's depth chart moving into the 2019 season. Going to break it all down by position. Remember, please subscribe on YouTube. Share this page with your friends. If you like our coverage, hey, you got to spread the word and help us get the good info out to other Alabama Crimson Tide football fans. We'll start out with the quarterback position, and no surprise, the returning starter from last season is Tua Tungo Valoa. Last season, threw for just under 4,000 yards with 43 touchdowns, six interceptions. He's got an implied probability to win the Heisman Trophy this coming season of 28.6%. During A-Day, he was 19-37 to 37 passing, 265 yards, and one touchdown. Saban, after Alabama's A-Day, said he's perfectly fine. Stop asking about him. He has perfect velocity. So get ready for a monster season from Tua Tungavaloa because he has an incredible offense around him. The backup quarterback's got to be Mac Jones. He had a very good spring, and I know he threw an interception during a day, but Saban has really liked the progression of Mac Jones, and he continues to say positive things about him during his spring press conferences. On the day, during a day, he was 19-23, 271 yards and two touchdowns, hooking up with Kedrick James for a touchdown, along with Xavier Williams. Behind him, you have Talia Tongovaloa, the younger brother of Tua, and then you also have Paul Tyson. It looks like Talia is a little bit ahead of Paul right now. Paul had that pick six in the A day, um, while Talia also threw an interception. I think um, Talia and Mac Jones are going to compete for that number two position as things really start moving forward come August and September when you know the pads get popping. So let's stay tuned to that backup quarterback position because I think Alabama fans. Uh, and rightfully so, should really be excited about the younger brother of Tua Tungvaloa, Talia, because he looks like he's got it. And it looks like if there was some sort of situation to where Alabama needed a backup quarterback, and we saw that many times last year with Tua going down, that Talia could step in and lead this offense. So um, right now, there's no definitive number two quarterback, but it looks like Mac Jones has a slight edge over Talia coming out of a day. Moving to the running backs, you got Najee Harris, six foot two, 227 pounds, big, imposing running back. Ran for 783 yards last season with four touchdowns as a sophomore. He's the main man. He's the guy. This season, he stuck around. Um, you know, th there was rumors that he could possibly transfer. Those were just rumors. Najee wants to be the guy here at Alabama. And Crimson Todd fans, get ready because Najee has the power and speed to do things that Derrick Henry did a couple seasons ago. Am I saying that he's going to rush for 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards? No, I'm not saying that because the way that Alabama's offense is predicated this season, there's too many weapons to really just distribute the football just to one running back the entire game. I personally would like to see what Najee could do with 30-plus carries. Um, but if called on with 15, 20 carries per game, Najee Harris certainly going to carry the load for the Crimson Tide. Brian Robinson right behind him, six foot one, 226 pounds, looks completely jacked. Uh, ran for 272 yards last season with two touchdowns right out of Hillcrest in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Robinson rumored to be one of the fastest running backs on the team even last year. Uh, and I think he's a guy similar to Najee Harris. If, if you need Alabama to really grind it out, to really pound it out. Brian Robinson can do just that. Uh, I'm more than elated to see this young man in action because I really think something special lies within him. The number three running back, who's it going to be? Trey Sanders, Jerome Ford, Chadarius Townsend, uh, Killian Robinson. Well, we can probably scratch out Killian Robinson, who's getting to Alabama this summer. Looks like he had some sort of a uh, surgery this past spring, so hopefully he gets healthy and and um, we'll keep you updated on that as soon as we find out more information. But Trey Sanders, I know a lot of a lot of you have asked, where's Trey Sanders? Is he on campus yet? Where is he in the footage? Well, Trey Sanders was not an early enrollee at Alabama. He will get here in June. And you know what he said coming in? You know what he said at his uh, signing ceremony? That he's going to win the Heisman Trophy this year. Yeah, 
young man, very confident coming in. And Nick Saban alluded to this during springtime. He said there's always, when you look back at the lineage of Alabama running backs, and when you look at the roster, there's always one running back that's a freshman that gets on the field. And I think reading between the lines, he's talking about Trey Sanders. Now, Jerome Ford could be that freshman as well. He redshirted last year, and he's looked very good during the spring season for Alabama. He had some big-time performances during the during the two scrimmages that Alabama had during spring before A-Day. So don't write off Jerome Ford and then Chadarius Townsend. I know he's played at a couple different positions at Alabama, but it looks like he could be settling in at running back and be a running back that provides that scat back type back a guy that you could split out, a guy that can make catches out of the backfield and turn things up and really help the offense add another dimension. As we move to the tight end position, the tight end position could be Cameron too, who's a redshirt freshman. Remember, he moved from outside linebacker to tight end this spring. He's a big kid, six foot five, 247 pounds. He's a big target coming across the middle of the field. Caught two balls during A day, two receptions, 37 yards. Tua likes going to Cameron Latou and had a lot of positives to say about Latou following Alabama's spring game. Now, at the tight end, you also have the H-back position, and that looks like it's going to be Miller Forrestal. He's a redshirt junior, looks fully healed following an ACL injury, caught three balls during A-day for 32 yards. Um, you also have Kyle Amos, who had splashes of um, of something special this spring, to be honest. Then you have Major Tennyson and Jahil Billingsley, who will be a new freshman enrollee coming in, in the summertime. Now, when we talk about Alabama's receiving unit, the most dynamic, the most explosive unit in all of college football, don't at me, you got Henry Ruggs at the Z position. Caught 46 receptions last year, 741 yards with 11 touchdowns. But oddly enough, he didn't catch a pass during Alabama's spring game. Now, that could be because he was going against Alabama's number one corner, Trayvon Diggs. You also have John Mechie right behind Henry Ruggs. He was named the Alabama A-Day MVP, hauling in five receptions for 103 yards. The native out of Canada looked fantastic on the field for A-Day, and that's a good sign because a lot of these receivers from Alabama are going to start exiting out, but John Mechie looks like he's going to continue that lineage of big-time receivers. Right behind John Mechie, you have Slay Bolden. Slay Bolden has looked nice this summer, very quick, strong hands, even threw a pass for 18 yards during a day at the wide receiver, the X position. That's Devontae Smith, a.k.a. Smitty. Caught 42 receptions last year, 690 yards, and um, very explosive wide receiver with Velcro-like hands. I like him coming across the middle of the field, not, not scared to do any type of dirty work. And then behind him, you have Terrell Shavers, now a redshirt sophomore, six foot six. 4-4-40 time. You got to think Alabama tries to get him to football in some capacity. Caught four receptions for 45 yards during A-Day. Xavier Williams is another guy at that X position. Caught a touchdown during Alabama's spring game. Runs very clean and crisp routes. I really like what I see from the young Xavier Williams, who is now a redshirt freshman. At the H position, still talking about the wide receivers, you have Jerry Judy, the returning Bolitnikoff winner. Caught 68 passes last year. 1,300 yards and 14 touchdowns. I don't care what you say. Nobody runs better routes than Mr. Jerry Judy. Kid is fantastic. I've been watching wide receivers for a long time. I've never seen anybody stop, pop, turn, and make the reception like Jerry Judy. Respect his game tremendously. Jalen Waddle right behind him, and he's one of the most electrifying football players in all of college football. 45 receptions last year. 848 yards with seven touchdowns. Don't forget, he returns punts as well. As we look at Alabama's offensive line, a monster unit, Alex Leatherwood returns, and he'll move to left tackle. Six foot six, 342 pounds, started 15 games last season at guard. So very versatile offensive lineman. Besides him, you have Scott Lashley and Kendall Randolph. Those are guys who could also rotate at that left tackle position. As we talk about the left guard position, you got to look at Deontay Brown, redshirt junior, six foot four, three hundred and forty-two pounds, and I think if he can eliminate the off-the-field issues, he's going to be someone special for Alabama's run game unit. Again, Deontay Brown will miss the first four games of Alabama's season. Likely starting at that guard position could be Emil Ikior, 
who's a redshirt freshman, six foot three, three hundred and thirty eight pounds. Big kid moves extremely well, but you could also have Evan Neal fighting for that position. Six foot seven, three hundred and sixty pound guard. Can you imagine? Yes, Evan Neal is the real deal. Our football analyst Mike Johnson really likes what he sees from Evan Neal. I do as well. Evan Neal, just watch the tape. Watch uh, watch the highlights on BamaInsider.com. Evan Neal, the real deal. Um, I, I'm so excited to see if he can push for that starting position come August and September. At the center position, you have Chris Owens, who's a redshirt junior, six foot three, 315 pounds. Saban has said nothing but great things about his play all spring season. So it looks like Alabama has a center that they can really rely on for the 2019 season. At right guard, you have Matt Womack. Looks to be fully healthy after suffering a foot injury last season. Six foot seven, 325 pounds. Alabama's offensive line would dwarf many NFL offensive lines. Yeah, they're that big. And then at right tackle, six foot five, 316 pound. Jedrick Wills, who started 15 games last season, All-American type player. As you can see, Alabama's offensive line completely jacked. And this offense is going to be electric, probably even a step up from last season. All right. Is that a is that a hot take? Maybe it's not a hot take, but that's Alabama's offense. If you want to read the complete breakdown, head on over to BamaInsider.com and look for Alabama depth chart there on the front page. Our team writer, Tony Sukalis, did a great job knocking out the depth chart in very detailed fashion. If you want to get behind the scoop, if you want to get those daily nuggets, head on over to BamaInsider.com and at checkout, the promo code is simply Roll Tide. My name is Kyle Henderson. I'm talking about the offense today. I will definitely add the defensive depth chart coming up soon right here on our YouTube channel. Reporting to you from beautiful Tuscaloosa, Alabama, this is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com.